I got the tractor out. I got the truck out. I've got the quad out and I'm using all of them today, baby. So vineyard making and uh, doing some greenhouse uh, cleaning and prepping. So it should be a pretty good day. We'll see how it all goes. It's, it's, it's warm out, it's warm. 70 degrees in the sun. Oh, there we are. We made it, Bandit. We made it. What do you think? Oh, he's excited. Well, I really like using the quad. You know, when I have to do small amounts of work or hauling a little bit of stuff around, I really like the quad. I mean, it's great. But honestly, you just can't beat the truck. I mean, I got to carry my YouTube gear, camera, the tripod. I got a whole kit here or spare batteries and everything. And if you just keep that on your quad, there's no room to carry anything. Uh, so having the truck is nice. And then I got all my suntan lotion, everything. I got more suntan lotion coming. I'm a copper tan, copper tone. Is it copper tone? Copper tan, copper tone sport kind of guy. I like that the best, but this is what I had. Every year I buy suntan lotion every year or sunscreen, whatever I call it. Every year I lose it. Now, when you're doing this and you're bald, don't put it in this area. You know, go around that area because that's where the sweat comes down and it gets in your eyes. Obviously, since we're working out here in the sun, we got our sun protection here and we got our uber ear sun protection as well. And uh, I think today, I'm gonna try to get a drone shot. I haven't taken this guy out for a while, so we're gonna see how he does. Let's get that set up. In fact, that sounds really cool. So first thing of the day. We're gonna see Bandit come screaming out. Run! <laughs> oh, the fence post, man. That's funny. You got the, oh, I broke a blade. <laughs> yeah, you can't take off with a broken blade. That was funny, though. Darn it, now I gotta go get another blade. That was obviously my first time doing that and I think about two years and totally screwed up. Shouldn't have had it next to the post there. Uh, that's my bad. And as soon as I started messing with the controls, pff, I just ran it in the post, broke one of the blades. I got spares, but you know what? Uh, work is primary here today. I think, we, I think we gotta get the work going here and then uh, hopefully at lunchtime, I'll go grab another blade and show you guys. That's an epic fail there. A few more rows to do here. I think it's what, two, four, six, seven seven runs one run is down not down and back just down this is the neighbor's gas can man it's pretty freaking nice i like the i think you said it's a jeep jeep parts it makes it easy to fill everything it's really nice well my body hurt yesterday when i went to bed Woo -wee. this thing definitely gets your attention when you're going i hit a rock yesterday with it nice thing is when you hit a rock it uh Waste not, want not. What am I saying? Oh yeah, I hit a rock. And the thing, boom, bounced up. And thank God I was standing back behind it. I mean, a little ways behind it. Just happened to be that way. Otherwise, that thing would nail me right in the chin, knock me straight out. I know, I know it. I like, really like hearing things. You know, it's really enjoyable. So I've been wearing these a little more, more often, but uh, it's good, it's good. It takes a little bit for them to form to your, your head, but once they do, it's all good. Kicked on. Oh, that's nice. Nice. First pull of the day. That's groovy. Hi, you. Hi, you. Woo. Oh, that's so much straighter than the other ones. Man, now that I took my earplugs out, I was probably yelling at you guys. Thank God for editing. So our, our next uh, job here is to uh, go out and mark everything. We need to mark where the posts are going to go and set up our anchors and then our uh, our end posts. I was going to call them corner posts, but they're in our, our end posts. We're going to use an end post, cement, and an earth anchor wire uh, to secure it. And then we'll run high tension steel uh, in between each of the posts uh, for the vines uh, to uh, trellis on. That should be pretty good, standard kind of thing. There's a lot of different ways to do uh, grapevine trellis. Uh, I'm no expert on them, but uh, I'd encourage anyone wanting to do this, go check out the different types. Uh, based on different types of grapes, uh, how you want it to look, type of soil you have, the equipment that you want to use, don't want to use. There's a lot of different ways that you can skin this particular cat. Uh, 
I think a nice solid, given the dirt, my experience with our post and high tension steel as a fence, uh, I think a single end post brought out to an earth anchor, uh, which is a metal device. Uh, you'll see as we get into that, I think that's going to be pretty, pretty good. So we need to get our marking tools out and uh, start marking. Hey, Bandit, come here. Bandit, come here. I'm getting water. I know you must be thirsty. He's my boy. Yeah. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I'm going to dump that on you. Don't jump up in there. We're not going home. We're just getting started, buddy. We're just getting started. All right, that's the nice thing about the truck here. We got everything back here we need. Measuring, that's almost out. Got another one here. Got just enough of that. Ooh, where are my plans? Let's get the plans. Need that level here eventually. Got my plans, how it did. All right, so when I do plans like this, what I do is I use uh, Google, Google Earth, Google Maps, and I get the aerial. Right? And then what I look for is something that I know the scale of in the aerial. And then I lay out everything using PowerPoint. Take the screenshot, put it in PowerPoint, and then I find that thing that I know the scale of. Like for example, in between each of my corner posts is 12 feet. So when I take an aerial, I can measure everything because I know that relative distance. I know that between each corner post is 12 feet so then I use that to calculate everything as far as distances go and then I use Excel just to calculate how much stuff I need here I got all the plans for the property that we put together I'm working right there and I'm gonna be setting one seven eight nine ten ten rows that's perfect and I'm doing eight foot spacing between the rows I was gonna do a five foot offset from the row but we're now gonna do an 18 foot offset and eight foot between the grapes. So here is row number one, and here's the road. And you can go through and mark everything on the road. You, you kind of want a line that you're gonna go with. So what I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say the road starts right here. And then I can project that line out. Uh, then what I'm gonna do is perpendicular to that. In this case, I'm gonna go a little bit off perpendicular. I'm gonna go with the distance here. Uh, the north-south orientation because the road goes that way, that way. I almost have a perfect 90 degree, and that's what you're looking for. So now we're gonna do, okay. First mark is at 10 feet. That's 10 feet. And then we're gonna go to 18 feet. And there's, 18 right there so what this is this is where my corner post this is why a ground anchor goes sorry and then what is it i think it's five feet so it'd be 23 three there it is all right so that's my corner post this is my anchor so we'll set this one here and then that anchor will come down. It'll be put in at an angle and screwed into the earth and then we run a wire down to it. Now we do eight foot segments and this, if you want to get your kids good at math in public, this is what you do. You roll this thing and there's eight, then 16, and four, all right, 32. So I measured where each of the grapes go but I should have, I needed to measure where each of the T posts went. I need to measure them both. So I still need to go through and put 12 foot markings on them because they're both factor two. Eventually one of them is going to line up. So we'll have to do an offset somewhere. But the T posts will be at 12 foot spacings. You having a good time, Bandit? Huh? Running all over the place, chasing everything. If it moves, it can be chased. Not much fun watching holes be drilled. But what I do when I set these, so what we're going to, we have the T-post that's right next to you actually. Another T-post there that's setting our main line. What we're going to do is we're going to replace those T-posts with the actual end post. They're going to retie the line and use that to actually uh, create uh, our straightness. So what I do, I carry my little pocket level with me. That's nice. That's not totally nice. 
that's nice and then we set all right just to detach the string here from the t-post and I got it set down on the other end post end post Jeff it's called the end post just sucking up the slack here that wind is gonna play havoc that's it. Now we got it. Because that wind is there, you want as much tension out of this thing as you can get without snapping the line. And you also want to make sure your, your string is on the same side of both posts. Made that mistake a lot. So I'm going to get this one on the outside and what's happening is down there because of how I tied it, it's shifted to right in the middle. It's not a huge thing, it's just a few inches, but you'll see it in your final product. All right, lunchtime is over. We'll see what we can do here. We got power on. Move it out a little further. A little breeze, not bad though. Let's see how we do. Should be entertaining, to say the least. A little flashy things. Take off. All right, we got up, we got down, left, right, pitch forward, pitch aft. All right, so far so good. Let's get some video. Video mode enabled. Not really giving me good updates. Oh, there we go. Gotta keep my direction here. There we go. Not running in the tree. A little bumpy out there. It's doing its thing. Turn it around. Do a few flybys here. So fun doing this. little breezy up there. I'm so out of practice. I used to be able to really drive this thing. All right, got some footage. See if we can land this bad boy. Little windy. I'm gonna keep it out of the dust. Really hit her down here. Nice spot. Where's a nice spot? That looks nicer. I'm not really a huge fan of the ground anchors. I, uh, I got them, planned to use them for this project because it's what the, the particular trellis system called for. I understand its purpose. Uh, as far as purpose goes, it's undeniable what it's here to do. It's the, uh, the fact that it kind of takes a lot to get it down in there compared to just drilling a post and uh, setting another post and making an H brace. I got this just a marker post uh, I'm using right now just because it's easy up here up high in the ground and then I got a breaker bar 
uh, that I can use when I get down lower and it starts to really tighten up. Get in there deep down in there. Uh, that rough tail soil's nice. And that'll be it right there. Make sure I can still get it out. Here we go. One grand poste. Earth anchor, sorry, earth anchor. It is so beautiful out here. You can see the little white line there. That's what's left of the fencing. It used to go right there. And then all the way back down past the garden there. You need to come out here after we get everything situated with the garden and pull up all this rope and wire. This is a good rope. This is actually electrical rope. So you can use it as a, you don't, you don't want to get rid of it. That's good shotgun stuff build another pen someday and we can use the wire uh, in the vineyard actually so I can pull that to create the trellises system and not use the brand new stuff we'll try to reuse as much as we can beautiful little piece of heaven so pretty right now with it all nice and green about two months this will all be brown Well, I just got done walking those two fence posts out and I'm like, why am I doing this the hard way? This is why a quad is so freaking awesome when you're ranching. I got the tractor out. I got the truck out. I've got the quad out and I'm using all of them today, baby. Whoa, almost lost it. Back and forth, you'd have to go to carry all these. And this thing just makes light work out of I just got all the holes dug. We got the second rope, uh, all the posts in, uh, got all the holes dug, and now we're gonna go separate out the vines and start putting them in holes. All right, here we go. Uh, so we are gonna be planting today Lake Mount Seedless White Grapes. And yay. The tractor fits just like it's supposed to. We're gonna be using this 50-50 mix, mixing it in with the uh, local soil. You don't wanna to put, too, put too much in the first go round. We wanna put some around the top of it, and then we're gonna start bringing wood chips in and covering all of the stuff we rototilled. You know, it's a double-edged sword. Rototilling stuff, it helps aerate the soil that's really, really dense, which we need. Uh, but in doing that, it also lets all the water out. Uh, so we want to get those wood chips back on on top of this really loose soil now that's really well aerated so the roots can all spread and then uh, so uh, once you get those chips on you'll retain the water so that's what we're going to be doing so I'm going to work on getting these in the ground and uh, we'll catch up with you after I get the row planted uh, I'll go mobile here in just a moment show you guys this but I wanted to give you kind of some perspective you should see a shiny line coming down on the left hand side of these posts here in a little trench what i've done is uh 
used a hoe and just put in a small little irrigation ditch here. And I have uh, some hoses hooked up, uh, run to the neighbor's uh, standpipe, uh, which I just turned on for the first time this year. Always exciting. And I just have it, uh, it's coming out pretty good. It's not on full power because I don't want to create a lot of erosion. But the premise, you know, this is not Jeff's idea. This has been along around a long time. Uh, we want to let water slowly move through this ditch, slowly, so that it soaks into the ground. Uh, and that gets into uh, the plants that we have in this area. Uh, we don't have enough hose to go and water each one of these spots directly. And I like the idea of getting some moisture down into the ground, you know, while we still can get moisture down there pretty heavy duty. Uh, it's been going, let's see, I cut this one in and I turned it on when I was about halfway done cutting it in and then I cut the other half and then I put in the trench on the first uh, row here behind me. Uh, so I'd say it's about 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes that it's been going and it still hasn't made it all the way down here, which is great. What that means is the water is soaking into the ground um, as it goes, which is exactly what we wanted. So uh, as promised, let's go mobile and I'll show you a little more detail before we get too far. Here's a, a ground uh, ground rod, earth, earth. Oh, geez, I just lost. I'm so tired. I lost my vocabulary. Uh, whatever. It doesn't, <laughs> it makes this so stuff doesn't pull out of the ground. You see how tired I am. This one hit a rock. It's the only one that hit a rock. You can see the trench and see the water. And see it slowly. This is normal. You ever played in a ditch when you're a kid, you know, making trenches, all that? It's amazing how God teaches us things when we're kids that are useful when we're older. Uh, this builds up. It'll back up a little bit. Uh, the water will back up like a dam, which will then soak in until that little spot right there gets overfilled. And then it'll push through and it'll repeat all the time water is soaking into the ground here you can see it right here see the dark this is the dry stuff that we pulled up today and now we're getting water down there and that's all going to soak down into those plant roots you can see it's moving pretty good here you might think that i have it turned on really slow but it's not it's actually coming down in a pretty good clip it's been a fabulous day's worth of work. I'm really grateful to God to let me come out here and work like this and uh, help the neighbors, help ourselves. We've got a good trade thing going on and uh, this is really gonna make their property a lot nicer. Uh, I think they're really gonna enjoy it. It's gonna be great. Uh, we're gonna be helping them out with it as we go. So this isn't the end that you're gonna see of this whole thing. Uh, this whole time I've just been going and just beautiful day beautiful sun, just great temperatures, uh, hard not to be grateful today, really hard, you know, and I am grateful and that's why I'm saying that. I, I can't find anything really not to be happy about today. It's, this is a really good day. Right now I'm just tired, Woo, really tired. Looking forward to going home and uh, laying in bed, which would probably hurt. <laughs> but uh, this is a good day and, and we're making good progress. Uh, we're going to get the other third line put in, which is just to your right. You can see that line going down on the screen there. Get that put in tomorrow, get the other grapes put in the ground, and then we're going to have to bounce over uh, to the greenhouse. The only reason we did this and are doing it this way is because uh, the company that we ordered stuff from uh, shipped unannounced. Uh, so they showed up and you only got so much time before these things go bad on you and die. Um, so. We had to get them in the ground, had to get some water on them, uh, and we're doing just that. So, thanks so much for following along. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. It was a great day putting it all together. It was fun to get the uh, drone out today. I'll, I'll try to do that some more as we're out here working and it's not raining. Uh, so, yeah, if you did enjoy it, be sure to give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, ring that little bell so you get notified when we put out new videos. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. And if you really like what we're doing, you can help us out on Patreon. In the meantime, everyone, this is Real Martian, out.